G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. And today we're going to be taking a look at elevators, specifically elevators that you can design entirely in vanilla. The design that I'm going to show you today is one that can go to multiple floors, is built with just pistons, and has sensors to allow it to have music, dings when it arrive at, arrives at floors, using timers to get it to go to multiple floors, and we'll go through each step along the way in order for you to be able to build something like this yourself. I'll also show you a few of the things that I feel can be pitfalls in vanilla designed elevators. So let's hop off this ferris wheel, there we go, and let's have a look at this elevator. So the one on the left is the one I've already built to show you what we're going to be constructing, and the one on the right is the where we're going to build our own. So if we run around here and enter via our stairs, we can have a look. We've got our elevator car. It has almost no gap between it and, and the floor here, which is something we'll get into shortly. We can hop on board and then the music will start playing. If we go all the way up to the top, let's go to the third. Ding as we pass the second. And we should hear a ding. It'll be a bit early, but Ding. Oh, actually, the top one's the one that works right. Excellent. And the doors automatically open and close for me. If I now run down these stairs and head towards the middle floor, we can call the elevator to that floor and it will come exactly where we want it. And down it comes, nice and smoothly. And... Ding. It's about to arrive. And there we go. As we walk up, doors open, music starts again. This is something we can do entirely with vanilla blocks and without a single bit of scripting, which is right up my alley. Yeah, the dings sometimes are a bit early, but that's more a limitation of how I laid out all of these blocks around here. You could certainly get a more accurate ding like you get up at the top floor if you set it up in a slightly different way. When you're building an elevator car, you've got a couple of options in how you approach it. You can either have the pistons push up from below, or if you've got a space above, you can actually dangle the car from the pistons and have them lower the car down. Either way works, and they'll both work with this design. In this case though, I've gone with a push the car up design, and what we're first going to do is build a horizontal piston, which doesn't make a lot of sense until you look at blast door edges. And the reason we're looking at blast door edges is we need a way for the car to slip up and down pretty close to these blocks. And usually the way I would design something that needs to visually look like it's touching, but the game engine doesn't count it as touching because the collision meshes don't actually interact, I would use a blast door edge. But in the case of an elevator, this is somewhere where I really don't like to use it. And that's because if you walk on with blast doors, you get this little drop, this little bump, and you cannot get it neat. If you put the blast door edges on your elevator, you're still stuck with it because the edges cannot sit on top of your piston part. You will have to put an armor block on there, and then you're left with the same thing because what you'll usually do is surround it with blast door pieces, and you'll still end up with this funny little raised part on just one block. There are mods that will allow you to have a blast door block to replace that, that has an attachment on one surface, but we're trying to do this in vanilla, so there's another way of doing it, and I think it actually looks better than using blast door blocks at all. And that is where we use a horizontal piston to start our design. And you want this piston to be attached to the wall where you're going to be entering the elevator from. So what we're going to do is, with a gap all around it, we're going to place a piston in here. On that, we will place a light armor block, and in a moment, I will show you how this creates the extra space. But basically, this piston has pushed this block just the tiniest fraction to my right. And that will allow anything that's attached to it, if we go like this, 
these would be able to slide up and down against each other with visually almost no gap. If I line up, you can just barely see it. But it's not a gap that the character can fall through or even be aware of as you walk across it. So I think it works really, really nicely. Now I've got a bit of space here, so I'm gonna leave this armor block, but what you can do if you're really tight for space is you could put your piston against your first vertical piston against your horizontal one. But I'm going to place this on here. And now we run into the second problem with piston elevators. If we have a look at our elevator, at our piston, we can right click on its control panel. We can then scroll down to here and we'll see velocity. Currently it's at minus 0.5 meters per second. If we hit reverse, this will make it extend at 0.5 meters per second. And this is one of the limitations of pistons. They can only extend 10 meters and each large block in Space Engineers is 2.5 meters. So this is only going to get us four blocks up. Yeah, that'll work for this floor to this floor. But what about getting all the way up here? We'd have to stack multiple pistons on top of each other to get that high. And if we pop this one on here and extend it, if we right click in there, Hit reverse and we can even extend this at a faster rate so if we control click on that and click two that's going to go up really quickly there you go two stacked on top of each other and we can just reach this elevated level up here but let's show a problem when we reverse these both down with two elevators with two elevators with two pistons stacked on each other, you actually end up running into a problem where they start taking up a lot of vertical space. And I prefer to avoid having a huge stack of pistons all in a line if I don't need them. And for helping us be able to reach each of these floors independently, I'm actually going to get three pistons into this space. But you can see I'm not going to be able to put them on top of each other because if I want our elevator car to be at this lower level, those two pistons on top of each other, that does not work. So we get rid of that one. And what we do is here is where we use our blast doors. So if we put a corner on there, then a corner on here, then we can use an edge along here and here. We take advantage of the smaller collision boxes that blast door blocks have and that they don't extend out to the full two and a half meter cube on multiple sides. You can see here that where the red box is, is the full collision limit and the blast door blocks don't quite reach that. Even though visually this edge does, the collision box is actually about 10 or 15 centimeters inside that. So that means we can place a piston right here and it'll be able to function normally. Then we can go again with our blast door corner here corner here and edge here and here. Now I've done this in a deliberately bad way because I want to demonstrate something. If we place a piston on this block now, the part will not be placed and it'll say wheel cannot be placed, but that's the piston part. And unfortunately, this particular arrangement doesn't work. There are many tight patterns that you can use, but this one where we've gone back one way and then where we've come towards us, then right, then towards us, then left, will not work. So you'll need to come up with other patterns if you've run into this problem. But fortunately, we only need three of these. So what we can do is place an edge there and then another piston right there. And we're all done. That will be enough pistons for us to reach all the way to the top. I could take two approaches here. I could build a block here and then a block here, and then I would be just a bit too high, but it would allow me to have the car here. If I place a block there and there, I'm pretty sure the character can almost walk across that. Let's see. Yeah, sort of, it's a bit, bit janky. So instead of that, what we're gonna do is we're going to place just a single block. We'll put a slope in there, block there, and a slope there. And now we're going to extend this up till it matches perfectly with this floor. And I'm going to estimate that's going to need to be a, 
about two meters. And I think it's going to be two meters because the full Space Engineer's large grid cube is two and a half. And I reckon that's about four fifths. So what we'll do is we'll right click on our control panel for our piston. And we're going to set our minimum distance. We'll control click on that and we'll set it to two. We'll then hit reverse to get this to extend. Once it's beyond two meters, we'll then hit reverse again and it'll come down and it'll stop at that point. So let's have a look at where that's lined up. Turns out I was pretty much spot on and I'd love to say that I'd done that on purpose, but that was all actually guessing in the moment. It's been a while since I built most of that elevator over there and I did not remember the numbers. So let's build the back half of it now that we can because it's not going to intersect with these blast door blocks. And you can see here, visually, those are actually right inside each other. But according to the physics engine, they aren't because the collision mesh of that blast door block is beyond, is lower than that point. So we've now got our lower set point for our first floor. Let's figure out how high we need to go to get to this one. It's going to be an extra one, two, three blocks. So that's seven and a half meters. So we need to set this piston to a maximum distance of 9.5 meters. It's the seven and a half plus the two. So let's set this to 9.5 and then we'll hit reverse. We'll get it to extend all the way up there and we'll see, hopefully, that this will then allow us a very smooth walk straight onto those interior wall blocks over there. Oh, look at that. Perfect. And you can see this tiny gap. This is why I like having the horizontal piston as your first part of your construction. This is just heaven. Okay, so now we've got a piston set with its maximum and minimums to get to this middle floor. Let's set up these last two to get us up to the final floor. We're going to need to go at least one full piston, so let's extend this one all the way out and let's make it happen a bit quicker. Velocity, one. Let's see how close we get and see what we need out of the final piston. Oh, we're pretty close. So we've got one more block, so we need to go 2.5 meters with that last piston. So let's grab it and we will set its maximum distance, control click, 2.5, enter, reverse it and it will take us that last little bit and then we'll be neatly lined up with these catwalk blocks. Oh yeah, that is nice. Now we've got pistons set up for each floor. Let's put a button panel onto our elevator and let's build three timer blocks over here. One, two, three. To help us set up the timer blocks more easily, we're going to name each of these pistons. This piston down here, it's the one that helps us just get that last little bit to get to the top floor. So it takes us between the first and second floors. That's not how you spell second, that's second. Then we'll go up to this piston. It also does that, so we're going to call it first and second as well. We don't need to know which one of these is which, it doesn't actually matter for our purposes, so I'm going to name them the same thing. And then finally, this piston does something different altogether. So it goes between ground and first. That's going to be very helpful in a second as we jump into our control panel over here and we grab our first timer block and our first timer block is going to be named ground. It's going to take us to the ground floor. So what it needs to do is tell piston first and second to retract, the second one to retract as well and piston ground to retract. So we want all of the pistons at their minimum distance to get us to the ground floor. And that will be timer block G. And that's all it needs to do. Timer block two is gonna be renamed timer block first. And we can set up its actions to set piston first and second to retract, first and second to retract, and then piston ground and first to extend. 
and that will stop us at the first floor. Then finally, we can set up the second floor in the same sort of way. Set up actions, extend, extend, and extend. And that's it. Now, with this button panel, we can grab our timer. Timer block ground will be our first one, so it'll be trigger now. And then first, trigger now. And second, trigger now. Now if we press these buttons, we should be taken to the correct floor. Let's test this out. Let's go to the middle floor. Down we go. And we should stop nice and neatly at the second floor. Perfect. Well, almost perfect. There was a bit of wobble there. And with this elevator design, what you can do is just quickly grab all of your pistons and share the inertia tensor on them. This will stiffen up the elevator. Now, you can run into a problem with this. If you have a lot of pistons stacked on one another, you may need to increase the force available to them to push something like this out of the way. Because of the way share inertia tensor works, the pistons closest to your main grid will in effect be lifting more mass once you turn this on. So they're going to need more force to do it and the way they can get that increased force is by increasing your maximum impulse axis. It's very quickly taken into red zone here, but it's still relatively safe. The main impact in terms of a negative of having a high impulse axis is that at higher levels, this piston will push straight through solid blocks and destroy itself and anything in its path trying to do that. Which is a danger, but if you set everything up correctly, it shouldn't be too much of a problem and it should be relatively safe to do. Though maybe not super safe on a multiplayer game. Safe enough for single player though. You can also get some benefit in turning share inertia tensor off for the first piston, so the horizontal one, because then you're not sharing mass between the whole base and the elevator mechanism. And you'll see if I go down down to the ground floor, everything's silky, silky smooth. There's no wobble, there's no buffeting about, which is probably good since I've only got about four or five centimeters between the two blocks. We don't want it bouncing around too much. And now we've got buttons that can take us to every floor. If we want a call button on each floor, we can just set it up pretty easily. Pop a button panel in. Hop on here, and we're on the ground floor, so we'll have a trigger now. Do the same for the middle floor, and do the same for the upper floor as well. So with button panels on all floors, we can call the elevator to us. If I click this here, it'll come all the way up to me. Perfectly where I want it. And there's your call button for your elevator. You could put buttons in for every other floor, but I don't see like that. feel like that makes a lot of sense. We would just want one button. Unfortunately, the button panels always have four buttons, but, you know, we can live with that. So now we've got button panels to call us to each floor. Let's put a little bit of style into the elevator, and let's put a door in as well. And there we go. We have our elevator car. All exactly as we wanted it. But, wouldn't it be nice if the door was automated, if it worked just on its own? There are two approaches you could use to set up a sensor to open and close this door as you arrive at a floor. You could either have a sensor on the elevator itself that detects people, and I would suggest using it as a detect the character, not detecting anything else. And I'll demonstrate that short, why I would suggest that shortly. So let's go differently to what I've done over here. Over here what I've got is a sensor at each floor. As I move into this sensor, you can hear that the door is opening and closing. So instead of having three sensors, one for each floor, let's put one sensor on the elevator that opens and closes the door. What we need is a sensor field where as we approach the door, we enter it, and as we get through the door, we leave it. So that as we're through the door, it automatically closes behind us. 
And probably the easiest place to put that sensor is actually going to be underneath here. We'll place a sensor here under the door. To help us with demonstrating where this sensor's range is, let's show sensor's field range in our info section of the terminal. And then we'll right click on the face of it and we can set up its range. Now, my way of always remembering which way around a sensor is, is thinking of it like it's a cyclops with a sort of a her face on. So you can see the eye is the blue part and the green part is the mouth. And that means that this is up. And if you think of it from its perspective, this is left, this is right, this is down, this is forward, and this would be backwards. So let's, using that, set this up. What we want is our left extent to be probably 1.25 meters so that it goes to the full extent of the block. Same with the right. Bottom extent, we want it to go out from the center of the block it's on, probably maybe a meter and a half to the other. So let's go 2.5 for bottom. Top extent only needs to go 1.25. Back extent. Now, this needs to go full, fully through the block that it's attached to and then extend up a little bit further so that we walk into it. So let's make that 3.5 meters. Front extent can be as small as possible and as small as possible for these is one. So if I now, whoops, click one. If I now click show on HUD, you'll see that everything just went a bit red and funny. And that is our sensor range. Something else you might've been noticing during this video is that I have this little HUD element up here. This is another mod. This is the Build Vision mod, which is awesome and incredibly handy. And I was using it to set up things earlier, but it's entirely not needed for this. It's just a nice thing to have. So we can see our sensor range. As I go into it, it goes green because right now it is set to the default and the default is set to detect players. So you can see the range that I've got. I walk in here and then I'll walk out and it'll turn off. If we want that to control the door, what we need to do is right click on it again, set up our actions. And you've got two actions with sensors. On the left here is your action as the sensor is triggered. And on the right here is the action as the sensor gets untriggered. So what we want is open and close. And I really wish I had a better turn than untriggered, but I think you know what I mean. So. As I walk in, nothing's going to happen because it's already closed. But as I walk out, the door's going to close. Now, open, close, open, closed. So it's all going to work without me having to interact with it at all, which is very, very nice. What if we want to have some sort of safety device? So if this elevator is down lower and we want to have a door up here and we've actually got walls all around and it's not just a door out in the open. Well, we can do that. And there's a very nice way to do that and have this door set up so that it automatically opens just as the elevator car arrives. And that takes advantage of catwalk blocks. Catwalks are very thin, so they'll only trigger from the horizontal point of view just as they arrive. So they're the perfect thing to trigger something like this. Now, the way I've designed my elevator is not suited for having this set up, but it's something I want to show anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a catwalk plate out here. We're then going to build a bit of a construction around here. Actually, let's put that catwalk down on this level there. Put that window back in. Now that we've got this little setup with the catwalk plate out there, we can set up a sensor that will detect it. So if we put a sensor out here, which it won't allow us while the car is there, so let's call it down to one of the lower floors. It may not allow us to place it, but it will be fine with having it there as it comes back up. So now that the sensor's built, we can bring the car back up and let's start defining our range and how this sensor is going to be triggered. What we would like it to do is just as the car is about to reach its maximum height and be perfectly aligned, we want it to trigger 
and open this safety door so then that our other door can be triggered for us on its own. And the reason we don't want this sensor on the car is if the car was triggering as it detected this, it would then also need a separate sensor on the car for this floor and a separate sensor on the car for this floor and there's not much room on the car. What we're going to do is we're going to show this on HUD. We're going to set our left extent to its minimum, right to the minimum, bottom. Now this is going to be the measurement from the center of the block that the sensor is placed on and we want to go just below the limit of that block. So if we think of half of 2.5 is 1.25, why don't we set this to 1.4 and that'll be comfortably below that. Top extent can be its minimum, back can be the minimum, and front, we probably want front to be about 2 meters. Maybe 2.5 actually, let's try that, let's see how that looks. It may need to be slightly larger. I think that will be able to detect that block there. So let's make it so that it detects that instead of detecting me. If we keep scrolling down through the control panel here, we'll get to detect players. We turn that off. We turn subgrids on because the elevator is one. And we can see as we did that, it went green and it's staying green because it's detecting this subgrid. So we now set this up to access our sliding door five, which is our new one, which is on the same grid as it. So we grab our sensor and we go set up actions, sliding door five, open and closed. So as the elevator goes down, if I hop in, we should be able to demonstrate this. We see that the doors are open out there. And if I press to go down, those doors close. And then as I go back up, those doors will open just as I arrive. And there we go. We've got a safety door that's fully functional. Now, instead of showing you through all of how I put the sound blocks together, they use these same principles. What I've got over here is a sensor and we will go and find that sensor for the music. So that's this sensor. We can see that it's that sensor because it's got the sound block music play and it is covering this entire elevator car anywhere within this area and that music will start playing. As soon as I leave the area, the music will stop. So that's a pretty simple one. That's just a sensor that's on the bottom of the car. For the dings, I set it up in the same way as that door. So as we pass a floor, the car will trigger the ding. Except in this case, because it's not triggering a door, the sensor can be on the car. And I will show you that sensor. So, if we have a look. I've actually got a sound block there, a sensor under here. And I believe I'm using this sensor as our ding sensor. Yep. So as it gets triggered, it plays the ding sound which is why it's not particularly accurate with the timing for the blocks. So if you wanted to have a ding that was very accurate, what you would want to do is place it somewhere on the side here and have it trigger against blocks like this, where you know exactly when they're going to arrive and that way the timing will be much, much closer. Or you could have the ding be triggered in exactly the same way as this, where the block is on here and instead of having this open a door, it would open, it would play the ding sound. You would be able to combine those together on a timer block, and we can show you that here. We need a timer block, and we need a sound block, something to actually play the ding. So we'll place those there and there, and then what we want to do is, since we, unlike the door, only need the ding to play on arrival, we don't need to play it on leaving, we can set this timer up to set up actions. It is going to open the door and it is going to play the ding. Now we need to make the sound block actually play a ding. So we'll click on sound block two. We'll go down to ding. If you're not sure you've got the right one, just hit play and it'll play. 
So then we go to our sensor, set up our actions, and in this case, what we want it to do is trigger now on the timer block, and then close this door on the leave the sensor. So on the enter, it's going to open the door, and on the close, on the leaving, it's going to close it, just as we had before, but it's also going to play the ding. So let's test that out. Doors open automatically. Let's go down to the middle floor. Down we go. We've left that sensor range. Let's head back up now. Let's see if this all works as expected. There we go. Ding and doors open. Perfect. Hopefully all of those tips will combine for you guys to be able to build some incredible designs for your elevators. This one's pretty basic, but I think it does the job. Certainly not pretty once you start putting these catwalk plates on, but I reckon you could probably hide them underneath if you wanted to. You would need them to stick out a little way, but you could probably do a better job of hiding them than I have. Them are many other complex ways you could set these up. You could certainly have the floors and the length the pistons need to extend managed by a script, which would probably work nicer. One of the downsides of the way I've set this up is if I go down, I go down at different speeds as the different pistons finish their extension or retraction, which you could definitely get around with using a script. But if you don't want a script, that still works. It's not horrible. I think it's actually pretty solid. And it is a multi-floor vanilla elevator without a script, so I'm pretty happy with it. If you've got any tips of your own, make sure you share them in the comments, or if you've got any questions about anything I've done here, ask away, either in the comments or head on over to Discord and ask me there. These designs will be up on the workshop for you guys to have a closer look at. Well, when I say designs, I really mean just this one. And I will also be putting my Ferris wheel up there very soon. As always, there is plenty more to come, so I'll see you then.